This is the first video in a series where I'm going to be talking about how to get a job working with FPGAs, VHDL, and Verilog. This video is about how to write a resume to get you in the door. I'm also going to be talking about how to interview well, giving you some example questions, and once you have that job offer, how to negotiate for a great job offer. So first things first, the resume. Now what is the purpose of the resume? If you think about a resume or a CV, it gets you in the door. Uh, so it's the first interaction that you've had with the company you're trying to um, interview with and get a job with. And really, you need to put your best foot forward and emphasize all your strengths, why you're a great uh, an asset to the, to the company and why it's going to be a great relationship to work there. So I have a few tips, things that I've learned over the years. I've interviewed a few times and um, created a few different versions of a resume and seen a lot of resumes come across my desk uh, for, for potential candidates to bring on. And a um, few things that I've learned over the years. First thing, if you have less than two years experience, keep your resume to one page. And if you have more than two years experience, you have a few jobs under your belt, you can start to creep onto two pages. I won't be too offended. If you give me a three page resume, I'm probably just going to throw it away. It's too long. Unless you have 400 patents and you really need to have that third page just dedicated to all your patents, then you should not have a three page resume ever. In general, try to keep your resume to one page. I mean, think about from the perspective of the employer, you know, they have dozens of resumes coming across their desk and they need to quickly filter through and figure out what you know, what's important, what, who's the good candidates in this pile. So trim it, make it focused, make it clear, show your strengths, uh, don't try to use too many words and embellishment that's not necessary in a technical interview. Perhaps that's useful for other jobs, but in engineering, focus on the on your technical talents. Um, so that's one. Next, custom tailor your resume for the open position. So if you're interviewing for an FPGA job, highlight all the interactions you've had with FPGAs. If you're interviewing for a software job and you start talking about FPGAs and they're expecting a JavaScript developer, they're not going to care if you've had if you've worked in VHDL and Verilog at all. So maybe create a couple different versions of your resume if you're not sure which field specifically you want to work in, and then send those companies that are interested in you know your software skills the software version of you, and the people who are interested in the hardware skills the hardware version of you. You can have a little bit of both, but you want to emphasize you want to make it tell a story that you're a really strong FPGA engineer or a really strong software engineer. And by highlighting the, the those parts of your resume, um, that's going to really make you stand out and. Uh, It'll be easier for them to tell that you're a focused and you're you're going to be good at your job when you when you walk in. You're not just going to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, next tip I have, and this sounds fluffy, but add lots of technical keywords. So acronyms, I actually really like acronyms on a resume, especially when it's talking about technologies. So I'll give you some examples: uh, SPI, I2C, MATLAB, CERTES. PCI Express, LCD, Xilinx, Altera, USB, UART, Git, uh, you know, all these things, Verilog, VHDL, keywords that, that pop off the page that when I see UART, I know what that is, I know that you have some experience with that, I know that in an interview I'm going to be able to ask you about UART and what your experiences are, and I'm probably going to make you explain it to me. That's the other thing, if you put it on your resume, make sure you can talk about it, because nothing more embarrassing than having some class that you took in college show up on your resume and someone asks you about it and you're like, yeah, I don't actually remember what I, what I learned in that class. So if it's on your resume, make sure you can talk to it. If you can't talk to it, take it off. It shouldn't be there. And like, yeah, so technical keywords. Um, I don't think you should use technical keywords like synergy or fluffy keywords. Um, I'm talking like acronyms and technologies and companies you know, physical chips that you've worked with. What development boards have you been? Have you worked on? Have you worked on an MSP 430? Have you worked on an Atmeg 32? Whatever it is, um, that's the kind of stuff that I, I personally am interested in because it's something I'm going to talk to you about during an interview. This is a relatively new one. Um, I didn't see this a lot when I, you know, when I was first getting a job. You know, putting a link to a GitHub repository on your resume, awesome. I really like to see that personally, um, and usually when I see it, it's it's from you know, younger, younger applicants, and they put it like email and then GitHub repo right, right below it. And um, so if you, if you have that, absolutely put it on your resume. If you don't have it, consider, you know, 
creating a GitHub repository for yourself and uploading whatever, uploading your homework assignments or any hobby projects you've been working on. You know, even if they're not done, um, something just to showcase your skills, your ability to write code um, is really useful from the perspective of an employer. Uh, you know, that's one thing that you often can't see in an interview is a code sample unless you unless the interviewer asks you to bring a code sample uh, but if you put a link to github right on your resume then i'll just if i'm interested in you i'll probably log on to your github and just poke around a little bit and just see what you're doing and uh, become a little bit more interested in you and see you know see some of the code that you spend your time on and probably ask you about it during an interview so i'm a big fan of that uh, i think it's something worth doing should i include my gpa this is a a question that a lot of people ask, especially when they're young, they're just beginning their careers, they're fresh out of college. In general, if you have above a 3.0, yes, absolutely. Wait for the truck to drive by. If you have above a 3.0, put your GPA on your resume, absolutely. If you don't put your GPA on your resume, it's going, and you're like, you know, fresh out of college or only have a little bit of experience, that's a bit of a red flag to me. Uh, I wonder why you didn't put your GPA on your resume. And a lot of the time, I'll figure it out. You know, if it's, sometimes it's just that people just didn't want to put it on there for whatever reason, and they're pretty competent and capable people. But a lot of the time, I'll, uh, I'll interview somebody who doesn't have GPA on their resume, and I'll poke technically at, at some of the, you know, some of the technical questions, and it's clear they just don't have the really strong technical background. So it's, it's a bit of a red flag if I don't see that there. It's not a reason to not interview somebody. But um, if you have above a three, I think you should always have it there. And if you have below a three, you better brush up on your technical skills because you're going to probably get hammered in a technical interview a little bit harder than somebody else. Um, let's see. So there's two sections of a resume. There's the at least two sections. You usually have like an education section showing where you went to school, what GPA you have, um, what classes you've taken, what projects you've worked on, and then there's the experience section. So if you have any co-ops or internships or any jobs that you've worked at. Uh, and in general, as you gain more experience, your education section should shrink. Um, the education section should just, at, mine at this point just shows, I went to college. Um, but other than that, I have my experience that I've had in the field is more important to a prospective employer than the education that I had 10 years ago. So um, I would, in general, highlight the education when you're fresh out of school and it should shrink as you as you gain more experience. If you never went to college, um, I haven't seen, what if you never went to college? That's a question. Um, I haven't seen a ton of, inter uh, of resumes with people who don't have an undergrad degree, at least. However, if one came across my desk and it was a really great resume with an awesome GitHub page and tons of projects and contributions and things, and clearly the person could demonstrate to me that they knew what they were talking about um, just by showing me some example code and showing, describing some projects and showing some good technical keywords, I'd absolutely interview that person. Now, I think that engineering in general is very uh, um, merit-based. So if, if you're technically capable, even if you don't have the education necessarily or the degrees to back up that show that you've gone through all these classes and have all this um, education under your belt, you can convince me that you're a great worker, um, that you're going to be an asset to a company just by, uh, in an interview. So I, you know, I think that engineering is relatively unique in that field where, you, you know, you don't have to have, um, necessarily these great degrees just to, to get you in the door. So if you don't have an undergrad degree, make sure you have a great GitHub page, you got some code samples and you're able to crush a technical interview because that would be I would love to, to interview somebody that could do that. That'd be really fun. Similarly, question, does it matter which college or university I went to? Um, similar to the last question. And I don't think so. Um, from my perspective, again, engineering is very merit-based. So if you went to, you know, uh, Gudger College, that's cool. If you went to UMass, that's cool. If you went to MIT, that's cool. If you have an engineering degree from any from any place, yeah, I pretty much put you on level foot on equal footing. Uh, when I look at your resume, I'm not gonna like see that somebody went to MIT and give them a gold star uh, in my head or anything like that. It's more about what else do you have on your resume that's gonna convince me that you're gonna be a strong worker and an asset to the team. So, 
again, if you, uh, well, let's just say if you spent a lot of money on an undergrad degree expecting that it was going to give you a leg up, maybe it did from a technical Technically, you were more driven and you had great teachers and things like that, but when your resume comes across the desk, all things are equal. So, unfortunately, you're not going to get much of an advantage there, from my perspective. Uh, that's it, and I hope that's helpful for people who are putting together their resume. Um, in general, keep it short, keep it focused, and keep in mind who's, who's going to be reading it. They're going to be reading a dozen, two, a dozen, two dozen inter, uh, resumes trying to figure out who they should bring in for an interview. So how can you make yours stand out? How can you show that you're technically capable? Engineering is a technical discipline. So show things you've worked on, show your projects, and make sure you can talk to all of it in an interview because you will be poked on, on things on your resume. Hope that's helpful. If it's helpful for you to get yourself in the door and you found this video helpful and you found content on Nanland helpful, consider becoming a Patreon. I created a Patreon page recently and I'm looking for some support there. So I really would appreciate it if you check that out. It's on the link to this video and become a, a supporter for me. Thanks very much.